Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today we're going to be doing another Arduino tutorial, this time talking about I2C, or I squared C, or I superscript 2, normal script C, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, what it is, it's a communication protocol that's built onto the Arduino, that's my chair, that enables high speed serial communication. And this tutorial is going to be based around this little chip, oh, dropped it. This little chip here. Uh, you probably can't see the writing, so I'll just tell you that this is a 24LC256 I2C controlled 256 kilobit EEPROM chip. So in here is the ability to storage 256,000 bits of data. So it's a really great chip if you're new to I2C, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use it. Okay, so here we are at the Arduino homepage looking at the Arduino Uno's pin descriptions. And what we're interested in is right here, the TWI, that's the two-wire interface, or it's, it's also known as the two-wire interface, it's also known as I2C. And it's, it, it's a two-wire system, so it has a data line and it has a clock line. And those are analog pin 4 for data and analog pin 5 for the clock. Now, if you don't know much about I2C, I strongly suggest reading the I2C Wikipedia page. It's a really great source of information, especially for I2C. Uh, it talks about all the handshaking that goes on in it and a little bit of history. But, yeah, check this out if you don't know much about I2C and are interested in learning more. So, let's look at the chip. Here's the data chip for the 24AA256. LC256 and FC256. If we come on down here to the pin descriptions, here's what it here's what we're looking at. Uh, here are VCC and VSS, that's high voltage and low voltage, as to be expected. Write protect, here are the I2C lines, data and clock. Write protect is going to protect the data that we've already written to the chip. So if you enable this, you can't write anything to the chip. You can only read from the chip. And here are the address lines. It, these let you modify the address of the device. If you know your I2C, you know it's a 7-bit address system. The first four bits of this chip are the same, but the last three you can configure so that you can actually have several of these chips daisy-chained together and be able to access each one individually. Uh, for these purposes, it, these are all just going to be chained to ground to make it easier, so this just sets the last uh, three bits to zero. Now, somewhere on here is the address for the device. So let's go down here to device addressing. And here we go. So here's the address for the device. And pull out your handy-dandy calculator. If you're running a Windows 7 system, the calculator on this is really nice because it lets you run a program review, which gives you all sorts of base conversions, which are really helpful for this. About where to go. So, first, so this is a 7 bit system, so the first 4 bits are 1, 0, 1, 0, and then the last can be configured to whatever you want. And we're going to leave those all 0, and if we pull that text, it's OX50. Awesome, so we have the address for the device. All this stuff necessary to write the code. So, let's go ahead, go back to the Arduino. We know the address for the device, so we're going to remember that when we start writing the software. But let's go back to the Arduino and wire the chip up. Okay, so let's go ahead and wire up this board. I've already got the chip placed. And, oh, it's my chair squeaking. Uh, I know it's it might be a little hard to see, but I've got three jumpers wired so that all th the four pins on the side are wired up to the same. They're all wired together so that we can tie them all to ground. So let's just go ahead and take a jumper and tie it to ground. So that'll set the la again. That'll set the last three bits of the address to zero while also pulling the ground to ground. Now let's give it the positive voltage supply. That's right here on the upper right hand side. We're just going to go ahead and connect that to the. Oh, 
I pulled that to the 5 volt line. Why did I do that? Connect that to ground. Connect this one to the 5 volts. There we go. Bend that out of the way so you can see. Okay. Now the right protect pin is right down here beneath the voltage pin. Now this is active high, meaning you pull it high and it starts right protecting data. So what we can do is just go ahead and connect this pin there we go, to ground as well. Now the last two pins are the I2C data and clock pins, which are connected to their equally named counterparts. So the one right below, right protect, is the clock line, which goes to analog pin 5. And the bottom pin on the right hand side is the data line, which gets connected to analog pin 4. And there we have it. So that's just the wiring for this. So we've got the address, the last three bits of the address set by pulling them all the ground. So they're all set to zero. This chip's all wired up. So let's go ahead and write the code to make this work. Okay, so let's go ahead and start writing the code necessary to implement the chip. So I've got the Arduino IDE open and I've imported the wire.h file so that we can start using the wire stuff that's the I2C library. It's called wire. Not to be confused with another library which is similar by name but don't get it confused. It's just wire.h. And I've gone ahead and put in the basic functions we need. Void setup, void loop, and I've even included serial so that we can uh, see what we're actually writing. Now, the wire library, because it because I2C is actually a serial connection, it has a lot of similar functions to the serial library. See, it's got begin, and begin. it's got write, available, read, see? But there are some other things. In order for us to, you, in order for you to use this, you've got to, you should familiarize yourself with these functions. There are what? Eight functions? Nine functions. Yeah, nine functions. Nine functions so you know, get you, if you're going to be using I2C, these are it's a good thing to know how to use every single one because they really are helpful. Okay, so in order to initialize wire, you say wire dot begin. Now this can, this function can also take an argument. That's if you want to set up your Arduino as a slave device. We don't want to do that. We want to leave it as a master device. So you're just going to ignore that. Save that for another video. So, no argument. Save it, uh, make it a master device. Okay. Now, we calculated our I2C's address to be OX50. That's in hex. So, let's define the address of the device to be OX50. Good. Alright, now let's define two functions. Void EEPROM write. and byte EEPROM read. Now, why did I do that? Because there are two functions, read, and if I scroll up a bit, write, that we're going to need to use to talk to this I2C device. Now, the functions take care of the control byte, this necessary stuff to start, t to let the device know that we're going to start talking to it. What it does require from us is the high byte the, and the low byte of the address we want to write to and then one other byte for the data so it's the high address the low address those are two bytes that are going to get stuck together that tell the EEPROM device what location of memory we want to write to and then the data we're going to write to those addresses so there are three arguments we need for write so one byte is the high address, another byte is the low address, and then one more byte for the data. Now to begin talking to a device, you start with begin transmission, and then the address of the device. Now we've got to write to it the two address bytes. So wire dot write 
high address first, then the low address, and then the data itself. The last thing you have to do is you've got to end the transmission. It's this stop bit here. So by saying wire.end transmission, it stops the transmission of data. It's saying to the device, okay, that's all the data I'm going to send you. Now, there is a way, because if you read the data sheet, there is a page write. You can continually write more and more data to sequential addresses. In that case, you wouldn't say end transmission. You just keep, after you say wire.write data, you'd write the next bit byte of data, and then the next byte of data, and then the next byte of data until you want it to stop, and then you'd say wire.end transmission. So that's, again, these are instructions that are particular to this device. If you're going to be using this device, this is the data sheet, but you want to read the manual of the device you're using, because these are characteristic to this device. But, for devices like accelerometers and other things that ha are I2C memory accessible, this sort of principle applies, writing addresses and data. So, it all applies, I promise. Okay, so that's the necessary steps to write data. So let's come back up to our setup and say delay 15 milliseconds. I like to put in a delay after a wire dot begin, really any dot begin, before I start writing data to it. It's just to make sure everything is set up and initialized. So let's say eprom write. Let's just write to 00, zero and then data of 125. And then let's put in a delay of 5 milliseconds. I like to put in a delay after I've written to an EEPROM or to really any I2C device just to make sure it sticks because there's a delay um, in the propagation of the signal through the chip to make sure everything sets I like to put in a little bit of a delay okay so in order to read from the device here we go so it starts out like the right. You're going to write the high address and then the low address. Easy enough. So wire dot begin transmission to the address of the device. And let's and because we're going to be using this uh, an address, let's just copy and paste. So let's write the high address and then let's write the low address. And then let's end this transmission. Okay, after that, we're going to read from the device. This little zero at the end here, again, if you know your I2C, zero means write, one means read. So now we've got to read, and it, it has a function, wire library has a function for that, wire dot request from the address of the device, and then the number of bytes we want to request from the device. So we're requesting from the address one byte of data, and while not wire dot available, so we're going to wait while it's still processing and then sending back. Once it's sent it all back, it breaks out of the loop, and then we can return wire.read. And that's it. So again, we're requesting from the address, the address of the EEPROM chip, one byte of data. One byte. Because like the read command, you can do sequential, like the write command, you can do sequential reads as well. So you can read data. So saying request five bytes will request address zero one two three four zero one two yeah five yeah zero one two three and four we only want one so we're going to return wire dot read and then coming back up to our setup serial dot print ln eprom 
read from the address we just wrote to. So let's upload that to the Arduino. Uploading. All right, let's check the serial output. So we wrote 125, and we're reading back 125. Just to make sure that's not just luck, let's make this. It's it can be as much as a byte of data. So let's make this five. Re-upload it. And check the serial monitor. As soon as it's done. There we go. There it is, five. Okay, so we've successfully successfully written and read from an I2C device. You can pat yourselves on the back. You now know basic I2C in Arduino. So we've covered the basics of beginning transmission, writing, and reading data from this chip. Again, you want to read your data sheet read the data sheet of the device you're going to be talking to. Uh, so yeah, begin and write read. So This is talking to an addressable device. This is talking to not a device that has an address, a device that has addressable memory within it. So like this I2C device has memory banks within it. There are I2C devices, like I said, accelerometers and gyroscopes with built-in memory that you can access, say, oh, I want the x-coordinate, and that has a certain memory location, and now I want the y-axis, that's another memory location. It's going to use the same principle here, but again, you want to read the data sheet to make sure it works the way you want it to. Now, this is just one half of I2C communication. There's another video I'm going to do which talks more about I2C Arduino to Arduino, because that's really useful if you need to chain multiple processors together. There's one quick note I should throw in. I, for I almost forgot. When it comes to I2C, you want a pull up, you usually want a pull-up resistor of about 4.7 to 10 kilo-ohms on the data and clock lines. It's just pure happenstance. On this device, it actually says in the data sheet I believe if we go all the way back up to the top that it doesn't require them. But if no, I guess it doesn't say that. But it so happens that you don't need to use them. But usually it's a good idea to use a pull up resistor on these things. So that's it for uh, the first part at least of the I2C Arduino communication. So this has been a uh, human hard drive. Thanks for watching.